Hello everyone. In this lecture we will be going over an international mathematics olympiad problem namely IMO 1989 problem number uh, 3. Here is a view of this problem. Given a set S with um, on the plane, uh, in the plane, containing n points. So these points are coplanar. And those points, those n points of the set S satisfy the following two conditions. First of all, no three points of S are collinear. And second of all, for every point P of S, P in S, there exists at least K points in S again that have the same distance to P. So that condition is the critical one, so we need to make sure we understand it well. So for every given point P of S, there exists at least K other points still in S that have the same distance to our original point P. So given these two conditions, the, this collinearity, well, non-collinear condition and this distance of at least K points condition, prove that the following inequality, uh, so this, this strict inequality holds. Um, so what I have in mind is to, con um, well, this is first of all a very nice uh, combinatorics problem. Um, it has some geometric uh, flavor into it. And the way we will be actually solving this problem, what I want you to do is to consider all order triples uh, T. Uh, these are triples of points M and P. Uh, uh, and M where, let me write that down, where M, N and P are simply points in S such that, so that's important, the first and second entries, so those, the first and the second point, have equal distance with respect to the third entry. So therefore, PM is equal to PN. And what we have in mind next is the, um, the cardinality of this set of triples. Huh? So let, um, let uh, T be little t here. So the whole uh, purpose of this problem is to somehow create upper and lower bounds for this uh, set of triples. So that's the crux move of this problem. But it turns out that it is a very common method that we use in solving combinatorics problems. Okay, so let's go ahead and consider an upper bound for the set uh, T, huh? the, our set of triples. So obviously it will be somehow related to the geometry of these endpoints. So let's start with two points. Consider M and N, these two points are given in S. So given M and N in S, we know that there exists at most two distinct triples uh, with M being the first entry and N being the second entry. So what I'm saying is my claim is that there are two points namely M and P1 and N, M and P2 at most those are the two points in T where uh, P1 and P2 are in S. And the reason for that, uh, so at most two points, the reason for that is very simple. Once you are given two points, M and N, so we know that um, we can obtain a triple like this. The meaning would be P1 would be simply on the perpendicular bisector of the line segment MN. So P1 is somewhere here, namely, let's say here, P1. But then, knowing also from the first fact, uh, we know very well that we can have at most two points. So let's call this point, let's say P2 here, and that's it. So I know very well that MP1 is equal to NP1, huh? so those distances are equal, because we are on the perpendicular bisector, as I said earlier. And then, the same thing here, oops, let me just do it nicely here okay 
So this distance NP2 is equal to MP2 as well. So we can have at most two points P1 and P2 associated with these points M and N where M is the first entry and N is the second entry of our triples. So given this, uh, we also obviously know that we can choose the first entry in N different ways. The second entry then can be chosen in N minus one different ways. Therefore, we obtain, so therefore, we obtain an upper bound for T. So there will be at most, so N choices for M, N minus one choices for N, and then two choices, huh? This one has two choices for the P, so therefore it cannot exceed 2n times n minus 1. So that would be an upper bound for the cardinality of this set of triples. So now uh, it's time to consider a lower bound for T. And for that we will start with the reverse order, so we will start with the third entry of our triple so let me do it in our next page here let me open a blank page and carry this lower bound from the previous page so so far we know that t will be simply less than or equal to 2n times n minus 1 now in the second step as i said earlier for any point p in s uh, we can find so that let's say let's make it into a claim so for any p in s um, we can find or we can say there exists at least uh, there exists at least um, k times k minus one distinct uh, distinct triples obviously in t in t um, whose last entry obviously is p whose last entry is p so the proof of this claim is again very straightforward so um and it follows this second condition of the problem obviously so uh, we know that there are no fewer than uh, k points in s that are equidistant from p obviously so therefore um so then in that case uh, so consider so that's what we will say. So, given our point P here, we know we have at least um, K points equidistant from M uh, from P. So, therefore, the first M3 can be chosen in at least K different ways. So, that would be a K here. And then there are K minus 1 other points remaining for the second entry. We know that all these entries are different. So, therefore, this... Uh, and obviously we could have chosen our point in n different ways so it's time to conclude that therefore um t the the cardinality of all the possible triples is greater than or equal to so we have at least uh, so the, the statement is clear at least k points so t is greater than or equal to n times k times uh, k minus one and now we can go ahead and uh, combine these two conditions uh, so we can call this condition one that would be condition two so therefore one and two would simply in so t is squeezed between two n times n minus one and uh, this expression here n times k times k minus one t has already served its purpose so therefore I will just um, eliminate it altogether. I no longer need that. So therefore we get nk, k minus uh, 1, less than or equal to, um, uh, yeah, so 2n times n minus 1. And obviously the n's will cancel out. So that will further imply that so on the right hand side I have 2n is greater. And on the left hand side I have k squared minus um k plus two i believe okay so um now let's focus back on what we want to prove here so i claim this is equivalent to obviously moving one half onto the left hand side squaring so that would be two n so 
that's uh, so this condition the left hand side here is obviously strictly less than um, our left hand side here huh? so and why is that because obviously this is k squared um, minus k plus 1 and obviously this one is plus 2 so therefore this does the trick so we just have proved the condition so this condition holds and we are pretty much done